me and you, so welcome to the, today's show. Uh, today we have two very interesting guests. We have um, George Arbrough from ProtoHub. Thanks for being here, George. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, and then we have Michael Gifford from Dodeki. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. It's kind of last minute, yeah? yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I just, it's very good to have you both here today. Um, and I wanted to kind of, you know, one of the things for me as a software developer um, is, um, although I do deal with lots of issues, this is sort of an area that's near and dear to my heart, is the, the whole idea of growing our technology space in Hawaii. And both of you are a part of that. Sure. Um, and you're doing it through ProtoHub, which is a co-working space. Yep. Uh, and there are rumors that you have moved, but you haven't actually moved yet. We haven't moved yet. We're actually going to be at our current location, which is at 458 Kiavi Street, on the second floor until the end of August. And by the way, it's a little bit, there's a, there's a sort of a fenced walkway now, right? Yes. So, so if anyone um, is, doesn't know where it is, um, you can go online at uh, protohubhonolulu.net or you can uh, just find the stairs that go um, up to the second floor, which is on the Mackay side of the building, the Alu Lake building. Yeah, because yeah. I, I was there the other day, and I, I was like, well, where's that entrance at now? And so yeah, yeah. I had to kind of look for it a little bit. But it's there. It's there. And, uh, Guaranteed. It goes up to the, which is a, and it's a high up second floor. It's, yeah. it's a little bit of a walk, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Michael, you've been at uh, ProtoHub for how long now? Yeah, um, got there in May. Since got there in May? Started working, yeah. And you are in the sort of, you have a partner? Um, I have a team, but I'm the only one uh, working in ProtoHub. Uh, my other team's on the mainland. They're on the mainland, okay. Yeah. And because your business is here. Yes. This is sort of where yes. you're sort this of This is where we here. launch. This is where everything's happening for us. This is all where all the wonderful stuff is going on. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, I, what has been your, your experience um, working with, uh, with ProtoHub? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a great place to work. Um, you know, they offer uh, high-speed internet, um, air-conditioned facilities, um, and being able to collaborate with other entrepreneurs um, doing different things and, can, you know, offering insight um, mm -hmm. and also helping other entrepreneurs um, who are kind of earlier from where I am now. Oh, really? Yeah, so. So it's a collaborative sort of very collaborative, collaborative Yeah. Uh, so, huge water, water cooler opportunities. Absolutely. Uh, and what, what, is, what do we call that? We call that a... Oh, uh, serendipitous collision, actually. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that co-working, so, you know, so many different freelancers and um, opportunities exist at the co-working space yeah. that um, if you need a resource or you have a resource to offer, that the chances of those serendipitous collisions to happen are much higher. So um, people gain yeah. um, clients, people gain connections, people gain their network, people gain all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's a lot of um, a lot of sharing. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of sharing of information um, where mm -hmm. people bounce ideas off each other. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it's the saying, "Look, that's not going to work." <laughs> you know, yeah. there, and there's value in knowing things oh, that don't work as well as knowing what does work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so your company, Dodeki. Uh, um, yeah. What is it that Dodeki does? Yeah. So we have an app uh, that. You can go on. We got a hundred places listed in Hawaii. Uh, you can order from, um, you know, Zippy's or a Big City Diner or Farina Cafe. Uh, go there, build your order, submit it, and it'll be ready when you get there. So we're trying to help people uh, avoid having to stand in line, make things more efficient. Um, now, is this only for takeout, or is this for sit down as well? Um, we're we're focusing mainly on kind of a quick service restaurant right now. Um, so you know, you could like at Farina Cafe, I often mm -hmm. order ahead, and I'll go ahead and eat it eat it there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the more formal sit dine where the sit down places where the, the waiter and stuff comes and serves you, you know, maybe not, that's not quite where we're looking at. More, it's into. more like uh, pick up. Yeah, more casual dining, casual quick service. service. Okay, yeah. Okay, so what's the advantage of, of, of doing it that way? Um, of ordering, going through Dodeki? Because I'm going to spend time, I still got to look at the menu. Yeah, well, because you can build it on, on your phone in your own time when uh -huh. you have idle time. Uh, you can track your order so you know when it's ready, so you don't, have, you don't have to stand in line. And for a lot of people, you know, we're very busy people. There's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things going on. Like, i got tons of things to do, and I never have enough hours in the day to do it. And if I can uh, have my order ready when I get there, it gives me more time to enjoy my meal. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have to just stand there, because I usually know what I want at most of these places I go. Okay. Yeah. Especially if it's places that you go repetitively. Exactly. And, uh, and then the reorder process will be much faster, too. So, you know, if, if I get the coffee all the time, you know, I, I can save that 
and just resubmit that whenever I'm ready. Oh. Uh, I'll add something here, too. Um, so I actually use Dodeki um, for when I'm on the run. But the, the cool thing is also that um, you don't have to wait for someone to pick up the phone. And a lot of times, people don't pick up the phone because they're, they're, busy. they're busy or they're cooking or you uh -huh. know whatever. So, But they, they tend to actually receive and respond to the, the app. So that's, that's why I use it. Because you, know, you, let, you call a couple of your favorite restaurants, and they're, they're slammed. Mm -hmm. but, um, but they have their own little uh, window for Dodeki, and so boom, comes up, and then you show up 15 minutes later, right. or whatever time you think is appropriate, and you're, you're, everything is either paid for, or you pay it there, and you're out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I, the other advantage to this I can see, too, is if, you're, um, if you call, and you're going to place your order, and you're trying to talk to somebody, and there's all kinds of background yeah. noise, and you're trying to give them your credit card number, and they, get, they don't get the number right, and it doesn't go through. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's frustrating on both ends. Exactly, yeah. yeah so yeah. we want to help the restaurants, too, be more efficient with their resources. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we, we help them on that, you know, use, leverage your technology to be more efficient. And we see it on, you know, there, there are other competitors, you know, doing things slightly differently, you know, on the mainland and around the world. And, you know, so it, it, this is definitely a demand there for okay. this type of thing. Okay. Um, now, um, have you seen um, businesses like yours fail? Yeah, there's been a few I've followed, uh, you know, in, in the startup world that, that have uh, not made it. Uh, you know, doing various approaches to this type of business. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, startups, it's, it's a risk. So, I, I, have, um, I have an idea. I, I saw something that I, I would like to pitch as an idea to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in San <laughs> or in New York City, in New York City, I'm putting you on the spot here. Yeah, yeah. In New York City, um, they have a thing where you can give a dollar to buy a slice of pizza for a homeless person, mm -hmm. and they put it on a little like sticky pad and you stick it on the wall. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And um, you know, I was thinking about, well, how can you take this app and turn it into something altruistic? And I'm and I'm I'm going to challenge you to come up with a way that people can pay like another dollar or a dollar twenty-five. Uh -huh. And in, in, so what happens then is that becomes a credit to feed a homeless person or a poor person and make that a part of your application. <laughs> does, does the shop deliver the food? No, no, no. A homeless person would then come in and um, uh -huh. have, they would be, have some, weeds, some means. Like in, in New York City, they use a sticky, a little space on a wall, and you can go take a sticky off and you can go ah, and uh, get, yeah. a, like get a, a slice like of a pizza. Like a pay it forward type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Pay, pay it forward yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, I thought about that, and I'm just, I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be great with an app like yours? Because two things happen. One is you know that a homeless person or somebody who's hungry is going to get food and, not, and the money's going to get spent right. like, exactly what it was intended to be spent for. Yeah. And, and two, for the restaurants, it's a good deal because, you know, they, that's, that's another customer for them. Yeah. And you're able to help them. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I just thought that would, might be a really something, a cool feature to add to uh, an app like what you yeah, have. It's an and, interesting uh, idea. I mean, we have a, a, a list, really long list of all these to-do items, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's some, definitely something that I will talk to my team about and see, you know, <laughs> what kind of time frame that might be possible. And see if you can code that in there, yeah. just a little extra you code. I mean? <laughs> 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 and then you're going to have to find some participating restaurants, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think restaurants might be keen to participate in something like that, uh, especially pizza shops and, and uh, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe burger joints where a dollar could buy somebody something yeah. to eat. Yeah, sure. Uh, it would be rather painless for the. Mm -hmm. for maybe them. Hank's hot dogs. Yeah. 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 A hot dog for a dollar. Wow, what a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, we'll check it out because, you know, I'm always looking for feedback. So if anybody has some, email us. Uh -huh. um, contact us on our website, dodeki.com. Um, yeah, and Dodeki is, it's a down, you download it. Where do you get the application from? Where do you download it from? Um, so we're on the uh, Apple iTunes Store and the uh, Android Play store. Uh, but you can just go to dodeki.com. We have the links right there. So you can go right to Dodeki and download it right from there. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. So that's yeah. awesome. I think, is this your website right here? Uh, that's not the website, but it's a, a, a flyer that I designed. Oh, this is a for, flyer that for you For the designed. restaurants, yeah. Oh, okay. Showing okay. them the, the benefits of uh, mobile ordering, how uh, it increases customer loyalty. Um, they tend to order more, um, and they tend to order more often. Uh-huh. Um, so there's a lot of statistics behind all So there's all a lot this. of value to the restaurateurs. Yeah. Okay, very good. So I want to talk a little bit to, let's go and talk a little bit about, uh, about ProtoHub and sort of what you did to sort of help young entrepreneurs like uh, Michael here. Sure. Okay, so um, 
so again, ProtoHub is a co-working and event space in Honolulu and Kaka'ako specifically. And we're right down the heart of Kaka'ako. And so what we have specifically with Michael, which, was, which is cool, and what other hubs around the world have, mm -hmm. is a work trade program. Okay, so um, if you don't have it in your budget to pay for um, an office space or maybe even co-working space or anything like that, then you can do a work trade program, which we call a host. So we have, I think, 12 hosts right now. Wow. And um, a lot of them are, are freelancers or building their own business. Mm -hmm. And so they host in exchange for membership at the ProtoHub. And so that's one thing that, that, that's how actually I know Michael here, is because he's a host and he's a great, yeah. fantastic host Thank at you. the Hub. Um, <laughs> it's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Good job, well, he's Michael. one of our lesser hosts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, so, and so basically he's been able to kind of save on, you know, on his end and, and still utilize the, the benefits of a co-working space such as ProtoHub to his advantage and to his business, business's advantage. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you want to be a host? I'm, I don't know if I have the time to be a host, but I, I got my fingers in so many pies these days. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll think about it. Because we're looking. <laughs> You're looking for more yeah, hosts? we're looking for more okay, hosts. Okay, okay. Yeah, we need one more host. Okay. Well, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about sort of the beginnings of ProtoHub. Mm -hmm. um, where did the, the idea um, for, this, for ProtoHub come from? Who's sort of, or whose creative juices were flowing? That sure. Was, yeah, so um, there's five co-founders, and um, the and Shana Trevena, who is, uh, is the, well, the hub is, I call it the hub, the proto-hub, we call it short. Um, it's her brainchild. So um, I don't know the, the actual like details, but probably about two years ago, actually it was two years ago, um, she decided basically that there was a need for a large co-working space such as the hub. And so the gap that we're trying to fill is, Let's say you have a business, you mm -hmm. have um, five to seven employees, and you don't have an office, but what you do is you go to coffee shops, right? Because that's a natural way for you to go work. Yes, we live and die by, die by Starbucks. <laughs> right, yes, right. Yes. And, and how easy is it to find a, a table at Starbucks, a lot of the Starbucks? It's almost impossible, right? So it's, it's an exercise in frustration. Right, right. So you either have to go there right as the door opens, or mm -hmm. you go at odd hours, and then, and then when you have clients, it's hard to kind of bring them in. and. And, and make sure you have a table. So, so that, that's the gap that, that the, the concept of co-working is, is filling. Um, and so that's what was necessary for Shauna when she, when she um, had her, her business called Smart Sustainability Consulting. And, and then um, with, with the ideas and, and support of others, um, the ball just kept on rolling <clears throat> and kept on rolling and rolling and rolling. And then um, I jumped on board about over a year ago and um, now we actually have brick and mortar, and we're looking at moving to a, a much larger space down the line. To so a larger space. To so a large, much larger space, yeah. Wow. Um, so consistently, I actually have to turn down events and people who want to hold workshops at the hub because we don't have enough space. And so what we want to do is be that epicenter for, um, or be a epicenter for, um, for event space and for co-working and stuff like that. Because there's, also, there's also other co-working spaces here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are. There are yeah. a few more. Yeah, the Box Jelly, um, which is an amazing space. Uh -huh. There's Rock, which is beautiful. Um, but it's you know, real, what's that? Uh, a real, real office centers. Real office centers, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. But that's the right. more the merrier, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Um, this is Chris Leatham with The Economy and You. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back in about one minute. Hi, Jay. Hi, Hi Jay. <laughs> My name is Keith Bettinger. I knew that. And I'm the host of Think Tech Asia. I knew that too. Here on Think Tech. Fabulous. Uh, You've got a great show going, thank Keith. Thank you very much. And for uh, our viewers out there that are interested in Think Tech Asia, it airs every Tuesday from 4 to 4.45. And uh, it can be accessed online at thinktech.com. Yeah, so what kind of guests do you like? Well, we have a, a number of guests from, from academia, uh, from uh, pr practitioners of international affairs, sometimes we have uh, military officials, sometimes we have public officials on the show. And our goal, uh, we try to talk about 
uh, current issues in South Asia, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Central Asia, all throughout the Asian realm in more depth than you would find in traditional mainstream That's media. the difference, isn't it? Exactly. That you're, you're reaching out beyond what ordinary news media would do. Right. We're and trying that's to, why we like you so much. We're trying to provide a, a thinking person's perspective, an intelligent perspective on what's going on and where both sides of the story, or even when there's more than two sides, we try to cover every angle. And I think that that's, uh, that's uh, one of the big benefits that we provide here at ThinkTech, is it's a really innovative source of educational programming for the people of Hawaii. You're great, Keith. You're, you are a great host. You've got a great show going on. I watch it every week. Thanks very much. Why don't yeah. you guys watch it every week, too, okay? 4.45 to uh, 4 to 4.45 every Tuesday. <laughs> We're back. Okay, hi, I'm Chris Leatham. This is Economy and Youth. Um, today we have two special guests, George Arbro from ProtoHub and Michael Gifford from Dodeki. And um, we we're just talking about um, the sort of your, your, the ProtoHub, uh, mm -hmm. the co-working space, and sort of how you got started. Uh, and then during the break we were talking a little bit about uh, something called Word on the Street. So, yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, uh, elucidate us a little bit more on, on that. Sure. Um, so, about... I want to say about six to eight months ago, um, we, we had a, a program. Um, it's something similar to Global Cafe, and it helps spawn ideas, mm -hmm. and people who have ideas, they come to and pitch. So um, one of the pitches was this concept of helping uh, homeless or houseless to, to um, give them opportunities in employment. And so one okay. of it, so this, we're on the street, is the name of the, of the program or concept uh -huh. um, is to create a, a newspaper, um, a local newspaper, and um, some of the, the edi editing and editorials are going to be um, people who are homeless or houseless, and they sell it, and then they receive um, you know, the income through that. And so um, it's been proven in other cities. I think it's actually... I think I've seen that in San Francisco. Yeah, and I've, I think I've New York that. as well, and Chicago. And, yeah, that's right, that's yeah. right. I also wanted to put the word out to people, um, our viewers, that if they would like to ask any questions, they can tweet us at thinktechhi. So if you, any of you want to uh, add a comment or question, feel free to do so. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm, uh, we're going to uh, go, ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. And so this, this allowed for people, an op for people to have an opportunity to generate revenue mm -hmm. and also learn about the publishing industry. And also just learn about entrepreneurship. Okay. Right. So um, costs and revenue, and it, it's 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 not necessarily a micro granting um, program, but uh -huh. there's a lot of parallels to it. So um, there's a little bit of a mentorship that goes along with it. So they teach you how to um, to be sustainable in your in your in your um, revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I I can see a lot of value out of that too because you learn things like you know being accountable, uh, showing up. Doing work, right, uh, and uh, being part of a, a, of a group of people who are working toward a common goal. Yes. So I can see a lot of value in that. Yeah. Uh, and this was, it came out of a startup from a startup weekend. No, no, this came out of a, a program that we actually host out of the hub. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we, we, you know, people host events, and then we also have events at the hub um, that we that we create and and we help the community. And so, so you know, we're we're a platform for. For the, the the startups like the, at the very early stage, right? Um, to to help give them advice, give them guidance, and provide programs that okay. kind of help build their skill levels. So, and, I, and I'm sure motivation as well, because uh, it's <coughs> difficult in that very early stage to stay motivated. Yeah, right, right. And so and so, one way to be to keep your motivation at that at that you know at a, a level where you can actually like do things is is that you're mm -hmm. surrounded and you're comfortable. Um, taking the risks, right? So, so if you're surrounded uh, with, by a community of, of entrepreneurs who are along the ride, that you know that risky ride, yes. you know, right? So, yes, I know. So, yeah. if you're if you're supported by a community, you're gonna want it's gonna be easier for you to to move forward, right? Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, so that's what we that's what we try to do. So, um, now you've been here two years. You're going to be moving at some point in the future. Is that because the current facility is going away? Yeah, so that's always been the case. Um, we've actually been in our, sp in our space for, for 10 months, not mm -hmm. two years. The concept was, was for two years. So oh, it's, okay. It, it took right. a year to, to kind of get into brick and mortar. Um, so it's always been the type, uh, sorry, the, the plan 
to move to a, a new space, bigger. Um, we call ourselves ProtoHub because everything that we're doing, we're learning, so we're prototyping. So actually, ProtoHub is actually part of a global um, network called Impact Hub. So we're Impact Hub Honolulu, mm -hmm. and we're going to be opening up into as Impact Hub in a new space. In, in your new space, yeah. You sort of change. We don't want to confuse people bit. right now by, right. by calling right. ourselves ProtoHub Impact Hub, but um, you stay tuned, Chris, and okay. uh, we, we will be called uh, Impact Hub <laughs> shortly. So yeah. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Now I'm. Um, there's some interesting data. You've, you've actually put together quite a bit of interesting data. Uh, now, I, there's some data I think is kind of warm and fuzzy. Uh, people tend to uh, work harder mm -hmm. uh, when they're in a co-working space. Um, also, um, they report that they earn more money. About 50% of them have higher incomes over time yep. by working through a co-working space. Uh, and I'm sure that comes from learning from other people in their environment about what works and what doesn't. I hope so. Yeah. Um, and then I, a lot of people like it too because it, it's close by. It's convenient. They can either bike or yeah. or, uh, or walk to work. Right, right. So um, we again like to consider ourselves uh, as part of that pillar of the live work play. So uh, you you look at and and you, if you if you study urban design or any sort of urban planning, you'll you'll see that this concept of co working has really um, taken off globally. But um, you take a look at uh, at what hubs do or co-working spaces do um, for, for actual like, neighborhoods and communities. Mm -hmm. And it, it, just, it has this, this multiplier effect, right? So, so this hub is, is spawning businesses. People are working out of it. Ge revenue is being generated. But do we really want that? Uh, I don't know, Chris. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if I should be at this table then. <laughs> Uh, no, we, we, yeah, we what definitely want What do you think, Michael? It. Do we really uh, want that kind I of want thing it. going on? I want it. It's, it's been very valuable. Yeah. Uh, the connections I made there, the, you know, the advice that I give people, it's, I don't I know. I mean, this can become a problem. you got all these people <laughs> working, much, making money, paying money. taxes, you know, what are we going to do money. with all that? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the whole multiplier effect of, like, we, you see restaurants build, building outside of the, the co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. You have other people being able to rent, you know, bigger bigger offices outside, and, and it just kind of grows and grows and grows. I and mean, take a look at Impact Hub Seattle, and, and you'll see that that's happened there. Yeah, no, that that is interesting. I I'm, I have a daughter who's living in Seattle, cool. and she uh, she, check it out. she loves she loves loves the place. I cool. can't get her to come back home, you know. So, <laughs> uh, but she's she's one of, she's sort of a, she's a dancer, so she loves oh, that. Right, right. That uh, that whole environment there is, yeah. is sort the, of up the and coming. Creative. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. creative, yeah. and of of course, um, there are some other statistics that are very interesting um, in terms of technology jobs. A lot of these jobs are technology based jobs. Um, yeah, so I actually have um, some stats um, that we've gathered from our our members through surveys, uh -huh. and um, so give us give us the lowdown. What's some of the lowdown? Um, that you're, uh, sure. So we have, we see a lot of uh, business consulting and and also um, education. So we uh, at our at the hub mm -hmm. uh, we see about thirty percent. Um, but the the interesting is that we didn't actually take um, technology specifically out of out of all of this. So mm -hmm. we we have business consulting, education, marketing, um, graphic design. So technology is actually kind of integrated with all of them. Um, and so the, it was kind of tricky when we were building the survey. It was kind of tricky for us to to just write tech, because I think, think all of them would, would have actually typed that. Yeah, I think that's the problem, um, is if you say, well, are you a technology-based business? Right. Uh, but yeah. most of them are. I mean, most of them, it's much, some, I would, I would some, estimate about some, 80 to 85% yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And of course, there's a very important multiplier there, because technology jobs spawn other jobs. Yeah. Um, and from what I've seen from other studies, it's about um, one technology job creates seven other jobs. Which is the highest multiplier of any other in, uh, of any other type of work, so that's very exciting. Yeah. So in fact, um, by what you're doing, you're actually creating new employment opportunities because people like you, you start a new business, yeah. which means you employ more people, which generates more business for the restaurants. Of right. course, that means they have to hire more people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. This might not be a good thing. You know, <laughs> we had all these people. We don't we won't have any excuse to. Uh, keep paying more taxes or keep raising our taxes. I we'll have, have, have more taxpayers. There's no such thing as too many warm fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, one of the interesting statistics I saw is that they're having to they want to raise our our, our uh, gasoline taxes and our and our vehicle taxes because more and more vehicles are becoming very efficient, mm. fuel efficient. 
which okay. means that they're collecting less revenue, revenue off the gasoline. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a vicious circle. What are we going to do? And a lot of people, yeah, so a lot of people at the hub actually bike or walk and take public transportation. Um, there's actually a group, um, have you heard of car to go So it's kind of like mm -hmm. that. Um, it's the... I don't know how to really pitch it. Sorry, Aaron. But um, it's, this is a car sharing. It's a car sharing uh, application and network. Uh -huh. uh, it's extremely popular. It started off in Austin. It's now in a lot of cities in North America. And is this where people are sharing their vehicles, no. or is this a? It's not a sharing. It's, it, a, yeah. it's not a sharing. The corporation owns it. Yeah, the corporation owns these smart cars. But you're able to to find it on your app on your smartphone, and uh -huh. you open it through your phone. Um, the car door actually, and then you, you pay as if you were to drive from point A to point B and it just be across the city as an example. Mm -hmm. um, and then you find parking like on the street, on the meter parking, but you don't have to pay because there's already a deal. Um, let's say, this is, I'm, I'm talking hypothetically in other cities. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so you don't have to pay because you, you're, you're, um, there's already a deal with car to go in the, in the city and county. And, um, and so it makes it very easy for people to kind of move back and forth or around the city if they have uh, meetings or anything like that. Right. Um, and so they're trying to bring that, that whole concept to, to Honolulu. Well, I've seen, I've seen bicycles. We have bicycle sharing companies, bike shares, yeah. bike shares yeah. that are coming here that are doing uh, some bike sharing. Uh, are, is, that, is that a successful business model? It, it actually hasn't, from my understanding, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's actually um, totally um, set up yet. Well, there's one in Kailua that's, yeah. that's working. So that's owned by HIC, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. But maybe not in Honolulu yet. That's, yeah, that's not in Honolulu. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, that's something to look forward to, I suppose. I guess it, it's part, this is, your business model sort of is part and parcel to this sort of cultural shift of people getting away from having to commute long distances uh, in automobiles mm -hmm. uh, and being able to sort of live and work in the same general area, yeah. uh, which is great. Um, and we're seeing, we're, if we continue to see more, as you said, there's other uh, co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, and are they all pretty much following the same sort of model? Are they? So, so yeah, impact hub, right? So uh -huh. the concept of impact hubs is to create a, a beneficial impact, either socially, um, which includes education, which includes mm -hmm. sustainability. Mm -hmm. So creating an impact in your community which creates an impact in your state or country or wherever you are, and mm -hmm. so, so all, all the way up to a global impact. Um, so that's what we want to do, is, is, be, is be a home for impact makers <coughs> and, and social change makers. And yeah, because you know, and here's the thing that I, that I see, which I really embrace, is that instead of companies working competitively against each other, where it's knock down, drag out, compete, 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 it's collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. For sure. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Yeah. Michael, you see? I mean, in the, yeah. in the hub, there's so many opportunities that I've been finding to mm -hmm. work with, with people in other areas. Um, and we both benefit. We both, we both are better off because we work together than... So it's much more that. of a win-win rather than a win-lose yes. environment. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I really That's hope incredible. that that cultural change is really kind of, you know, taking place and it's going to go somewhere. I mean, I think I think all three of us here are, are, are supporters of that of that change. Absolutely. Yeah, that that Absolutely. collaboration versus competition, right? I mean, an example is uh, with Box Jelly and uh, and uh, Ray Chong and Shauna. You know, they were friends, That's right? They're their friends, and, and um, I'm friends with with them at, at the Box Jelly, and we do actual events and programs together in synchronicity. And um, there's members that go there <coughs> mm -hmm. because they prefer Box Jelly, and there's members who come to the to the hub. And so, like, it doesn't have to be competition all the time it can be collaboration and everyone wins yeah I think so I think well and too there's so much upside potential uh, and growth opportunity to mm -hmm. agree um, where there is going to be as we're building you know Kakak what we have just an incredible amount of development that's going on over the next uh, that has occurred and will continue to oh, go yeah. on for the next few years um, with more office space uh, and such um, but I don't see them building large offices uh, looking at the designs, there are going to be more smaller places, and so places like what you offer will be where, where the collaboration and opportunity to develop these these new business ideas will 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 ferment. Um, what else? Um, what is just sort of your and maybe we can talk about this. We can go to commercial and come back, but I'd like to hear more about sort of your plans going forward. Okay. What what you want to accomplish, and also. With with the decky, I want to know more about where you're where you're what's on your bucket list okay. of things that you still want to get done. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy in You. We're going to take a short commercial break. We'll be right back. Aloha. Aloha. My name is PJ, and I'm the host of Hawaii Sports Update. I am very interested in local sports, and that's why I host the Hawaii Sports Update show. I bring in guests from Hawaii. I bring in guests from UH. I bring in guests from the community. I bring in big names. I bring in small names. I bring in all names that are community-related and doing positive things, sports-related in the community. Come join me every Tuesday at 1 p.m. here on Hawaii Sports Update. You can also join me on my golf tournament, the first annual PJ Sports Radio Show Golf Tournament. It's going to be held at Coral Creek. For any information, go to Think Tech Hawaii, I-N-C, and friend us. The PayPal and a summary of the event will be right there, available for you. And don't forget to tweet us. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Hi. Aloha. Good. Oh, my gosh. We're back again. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham. Uh, this is The Economy and You. Uh, today's guest is George Yarbrough from uh, ProtoHub and Michael Gifford from Dodecky. Um, so, uh, George, I, looking at the things that you guys have done, but you're really just sort of in the beginning stages of what you intend to accomplish. We're a startup. You're a startup. So, uh, culturally, uh, startups have a sort of a unique culture, um, and does the culture change over time? Do you, do you envisage that your culture will change? Let me rephrase the question. Will sure. you envisage that your culture will change over time? Um, you know, I think there will be a lot of changes, and I don't necessarily see our culture change because I think that we're we're all the idea and the mantra that we have is not necessarily going to change, right? So that that's our guide. Um, our goal is not going to be changed at all, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of shifts along the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is inevitable as a startup, you know. Sure. Uh, you absolutely. have to be flexible. Yeah. Uh -huh. You pivot. You know. Yeah. Sometimes exactly. You, have to pivot. you pivot. Yeah. yeah. Which we we've definitely encountered <laughs> enough. Pivots, you know? Yeah, for sure. I feel like sometimes it's a, you know a Disneyland ride. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the stuff that you envisage going forward, or the things that you'd like to accomplish. Right. Okay. So I mean, obviously, there's there's you know growing um, our presence in the community, helping more uh, small businesses kind of get off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, down the line, we would like to kind of um, borrow the 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 model of, of other hubs, which is um, have like a, an incubation uh, for for small startups and okay. and, um, and fitting and. and allowing ourselves to fit comfortably with the other uh, stakeholders in the community, such as accelerators, which is the blue, you know, blue startups. That's right, and incubators. Have an energy accelerator. Right. Um, so, so being a, um, a prominent player in, in that community, uh -huh. um, but also being um, a prominent su supporter in, and being able to support um, Hawaii in its growth and, and startups, um, allowing it to be somewhere where it's accessible for, for, for small groups and small um, startups to gain right. resources. That's right. That's so, right. you know, there's Startup Hawaii, uh, uh, Startup Paradise, the whole concept of that. That's so. right. That's right. And UH also has an accelerator that they're, mm -hmm. they're developing. Accelerate UH, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and the thing is, is uh, you know, if you're a serious startup, Trying to build, build an infrastructure here where a serious startup says, you know what, I can go to Hawaii and I can get the resources that I need to launch my company. Because, um, you know, a lot of people think of San Francisco, the Bay Area, and they think of New York. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even the, the uh, Seattle, Washington area yeah, as, sure. um, as sort of hubs for startups and sure. getting the financing. But it's really an imperative for Hawaii to become one of those places, to become a place where we have the capital and the resources to launch startups. Because in the terms of what we can do, we can't do manufacturing. Not really. No, um, not economically. Not, not, <laughs> a, not, yeah, yeah. We have challenges with, uh, with uh, the cost of shipping because of the, the Jones Act. It in, impacts our, our competitiveness and our cost to bring goods to Hawaii. Um, and so technology and where we're located because we're we are where east meets west mm -hmm. yeah. so we have a great location mm -hmm. 
So to me, and, and it's not an overly regulated area, you know, regulation stymies growth in an industry. And, and fortunately, technology is, is a space where either we're moving too fast for the, the politicians to catch up, which <laughs> 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 is probably a good thing. Um, and um, and uh, we're not, you know, there's not a lot of taxes or levies associated with startups working in the technology space. So there is an opportunity for us to grow. And if this is, a, in my opinion, this is going to be an area where if we want to grow our economy, this is where it has to be. Yeah, yeah. And I think we have, we have definitely have to do it together with, um, you know, the private and the public sector together. Um, and there needs to be that, that collaboration and understanding. I mean, so like taxes is, you know, are, are, taxes here in Hawaii definitely don't help the situation for startups. That's right. I mean, you know this, and I think a lot of people know that who've ever started a business here. Um, there's always that, that pool to try to start it up in Delaware for tax breaks. But, you know, you want to start it here in Hawaii because you want to show that you're, you know, born and bred the business here mm -hmm, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, so there, I think there, there just needs, there needs to be that understanding from the private and public. And there's a lot of people who are doing that. You know, you have the Shinshanoa and uh, the, the Sultan brothers and, um, you know, Melly James. And they're, they're, they're all trying to kind of work that system. Mm -hmm. And we also need to be talking with our politicians. And, well, uh, that's what I mean. They're, they're, yes. they're, they're, you know, they're closest talking to the politicians. And, 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 um, yeah, and you're, you're a great bridge for that, right? <laughs> yeah. I talk to politicians, yeah. too, whatever they give me a chance. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah, there definitely needs to be that, that cultural shift here in Hawaii. And I think that's, that's, right. what, that's going back to that question, I think that's what we need to kind of help. Yeah, now, for you, what do you see um, for, you, for your organization, since you're a startup, yeah. um, what do you see, where do you see your startup going? What would you like to be able to achieve? If all things were possible, what would you like to achieve? Um, I mean, we, we're going for global domination, no <laughs> doubt about it. But, um, you know, in the, in the near term, I mean, we're just trying to get more restaurants uh, signed up, uh, get more users aware of us, start using us, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, get feedback uh, and, and raising money. You mentioned raising money earlier. Yes. Um, that's kind of next on our list. You know, we, we, so far we've done friends and family, um, we're starting to get traction now, so we're definitely going to start looking uh, very you, soon. You know you've got all the money out of friends and family when they, <laughs> they don't take your calls anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I don't know. I know why he's calling. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah. And um, are, do you see yourself expanding beyond Hawaii, the borders of Hawaii? Yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, looking beyond Hawaii. But, you know, being from Hawaii, you know, for, for nine years now, um, mm -hmm. I went through the Founder Institute uh, incubator here where I met a lot of uh, mentors and, and other people that really helped me along. So uh, when, it, when we finally got to launch, um, there was no question that this was going to be the place we launched. Okay, um, okay, very good, very good. So. so we hope to see great things from Dodeki. Thank you. Especially that little piece of application where people can do, uh, can uh, pay it forward. Pay, pay it forward. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the idea. It's, it's a great idea. Okay, and for, uh, for ProtoHub, um, in the near term, um, one of the things I, I did enjoy, I, I've been to classes at ProtoHub. Yeah. And uh, I also, of course, I'm, I'm working toward my teaching credentials. I guess not, of course, but I'm working toward my teaching credentials because currently I don't think anybody locally is teaching Microsoft-based technologies. Um, they, the military seems to be sending people to the mainland for classes mm. instead of having an, an entity. There used to be computer training academy, but no longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of my visions is to be able to work with an organization like ProtoHub and uh, actually start teaching uh, C Sharp and uh, some of the Microsoft related stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's always, uh, we're, we're open to the community. If you or if anyone knows of um, a workshop or an op you know if you want to start a class to offer to the community mm -hmm. by all means come in and we'll talk and, we'll, and so we've already done that with a few people we have WordPress workshop Wednesday every Wednesday um, by John LeBlanc and he teaches people from this from the people who don't know anything about WordPress by, by the time they're leaving the the fourth class they're already rocking it and then we okay. have how to build okay. your own app right with a star foundry on Thursdays oh. so um, if you, Chris, if you want to come in with a with a class, <laughs> all right, honest, all right, it. okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're gonna be sorry you said that. <laughs> Collaboration, right? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, you know, it's 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 wonderful that we have organizations like you that will embrace people that have an idea to start Thanks. something, to teach something, whether it's basket weaving or 
or um, you know, and, and by the way, basket weaving is kind of cool stuff. You know, there's a lot to yeah, know I'm, about basket yeah, weaving. So, I mean, uh, or working with uh, even some of the Hawaiian, maybe some of the things that are related to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I once went and watched people make tapa, uh, and uh, which was the what Hawaiians use for paper and clothing and all sorts of other sure. things. Yeah, we had um, a hopono bono class uh, at the hub, and I don't want to go too much into it, but it, it's. Um, it was a pretty, I went through it and it was, uh, it was pretty mind expanding. Um, so we're definitely open to all different aspects of, okay. of classes. Okay, and how do they reach out to you at, at ProtoHub? What's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, so you can visit our website again at protohubhonolulu.net. Uh, you can email me and Shauna and that's info at protohubhonolulu.net. Okay. Um, you can call me at 754-6362. And um, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on um, Foursquare. You can find us on Yelp. You can find us uh, on shoot on most of the of the social media platforms. Okay, Twitter. very good. Yeah. And Dodeki, if uh, if there yeah. were restaurants that wanted to know yeah. how to sign up and become one of your uh, uh, restaurants yeah. in your in your uh, platform, yeah. how do they reach out to you? Uh, they can go to dodeki.com. Um, mm -hmm. They can email me at info at dodeki dot com. Okay. Uh, they can and call spell me. dodeki because I, I had a little trouble with it. D o d e c k i. E c k i. That's right. And uh, or they can call me three 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 seven four zero. Okay. And um, anything, um, anybody that you want to uh, mention uh, on your team? On my team. We, on your team, that you want to <laughs> put a shout out to on your uh, team? Well, Titus has been uh, our developer. He's been awesome. Um, and, uh, and we're about to Titus? give him a lot more work. Uh, he's currently in Seattle. He's in Seattle. Yeah, we, okay. we, we had to find our developer um, in, uh, uh, out of Hawaii. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of a long story, but um, you know, everybody knows there's kind of a challenge finding developers you know, here to work with your startup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that is a challenge, so we need more yeah. development. That's why That's one of the right, reasons yeah. I decided and, and, I wanted to teach. And Russell Chung, yes. uh, Russell Chung uh, who, who did the Founding Institute with me, he right after that started Dev League. And I heard that they had a lot more developers this year at Startup Weekend. Or maybe you need um, to go and cannibalize so, from him. Uh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, but it just kind of worked out, you know, uh -huh. where, we, where we had to find ours um, elsewhere. But, well, good. Well, thank you, Michael, and, and thank, thank you, George, you. for being on the show this week. Um, I'm so glad that you guys chose to do the show. Um, I really appreciate Thanks you coming me. on. And, um, and next thank week, um, we'll be back Wednesday at 3. I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy and You. And thank you again, guys, for being here. Thank you very Aloha. much.